What's up YouTube? This is LDS Reliance. I'm back again today doing another solar video. This time I'm going to definitively show you that in almost every case, at least in the United States, solar will be a good long-term investment. I've done calculations like these before in other videos, but I keep getting comments in the video comments saying that solar is never a good investment, that the math proves me wrong, etc, etc. So hopefully having an entire video dedicated to nothing but this topic will set the record straight. Now before we get started, I want to warn you, there is a lot of math in this video, so if your eyes are glazing over and you think math is boring and analysis is boring, this isn't the video for you. Go ahead and hit the back button. First, let's talk about the assumptions. Now this is where some of you are going to try to argue with me. So I tried to find black and white third-party objective sources for all of these statistics, usually the U.S. government. And all of this math is going to be for the United States, so I apologize for my international viewers. But anyway, these are the assumptions that I'm making, and I'm going to put a link to where I got this information from in the video description. So if you want to argue with me on this, go argue with the federal government, because this is their information. First, we need to establish the average cost per kilowatt hour for energy. And as of May 2019, according to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, which is part of the U.S. Department of Energy, the average cost in the United States is 13.32 cents. Next, we need to know the average sun hours that we're going to be dealing with. Now, we're going to actually use different sun hour numbers for each of these three scenarios. A good scenario, a, an average scenario, and a bad scenario. So we're not using 4.25 for all of the calculations. So that one's going to change on a case-by-case -case basis, but that's where I got the information from. Next, we need to know how much solar costs. So the average cost for installed solar panel systems in 2018, again according to the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, is $3.11 per watt. Then we need to know how much losses we're going to absorb translating the solar panel energy into usable energy. And what I did was I went to the PV Watts website, which we'll discuss in a second, and I use the default number that they use across the country in the United States, and that is 14% losses. And finally, we need to know how much it's going to cost you if you have to take out a loan for the solar panels. What's your interest rate going to be? Now, according to LendingTree, I, I couldn't find any government source, but according to LendingTree, the average home equity loan interest rate is 5.76%. Now, if you have bad credit, it's going to be higher. If you have good credit, it's going to be lower, but that's a good average we can use. So back to PV Watts. What is PV Watts? It's a website uh, produced by the National Renewable Energy Laboratory of the U.S. Department of Energy. And what it does is it calculates for you how much solar will produce in your area. So you put in where you live, you put in all the parameters of the installation, and it will tell you how much you can expect of real-world solar production where you live, taking into account weather and everything involved. I could have showed you the raw math behind this, but again, I would have to make more assumptions. I would have to make assumptions about weather and stuff that you guys would probably disagree with me on. So we're going to use what the federal government says and use that as the third-party objective source. So before we dive into the math, I know some of you may be saying, well, what about insurance costs? Well, in most cases, according to Nationwide Insurance, you do not have to change your homeowner's policy at all. It's already covered. However, that's not always the case, and it may exclude certain things. So in, one, in the bad scenario we're going to go through, I did include an increase in your homeowner's insurance costs. So now let's talk about an average scenario. I chose Kansas City because it's right in the middle of the country, and it's halfway in between the high sun areas and the low sun areas of the country. I ran the numbers in a financing scenario and if you're going to pay cash for the solar. Either way, it's going to cost you $3.11 per watt for the system. Now, according to the numbers we already found, the average American home will consume 10,399 kilowatt hours in a year. Now, to produce that much energy in Kansas City, you would need an 8 kilowatt solar panel system, basically, according to PV Watts. 
Now please note we're talking about a zero-sum net metering scenario here. So in other words, you're going to produce more energy than you need in the summer and get a little bit of extra money from that, but you're going to produce less uh, energy than you need in the winter and pay a little bit for your energy. But overall it evens out to zero dollars. All told, your solar panel system in Kansas City is going to cost you $25,000. If you have to get that financed, we accounted for the interest rate there. Now Missouri is blessed with some decent uh, utility incentives, so we included the average utility, and it's, it's $500 per kilowatt across the state in all the utilities that I found, and almost the entire state is covered by those utilities. Now in this scenario, this is an average situation, and again, according to Nationwide Insurance, the average homeowner does not need to change their policy. I also included the ITC 30% tax rebate, so we threw that in there. 30% of 25,000 is 7,500, so your net total cost is 23,198 if you have to finance it. Now, you're gonna save $1,385 per year in energy costs because you're not gonna have an electric bill anymore. So your break-even point, if you finance it, is going to be 16 year, 16.75 years. Now obviously it's a much different story if you pay cash. You won't incur any of that interest and all of that extra money, which totals about 10 grand worth of interest over the life of a 12-year loan. So you're going to break even in 9.75 years. That's a pretty good investment. 16.75, you know, that's a very long-term investment. Solar panel systems last for 25 years, so you're going to get, you know, a good six or eight years of proper solar production from the system after you've already paid it off. So what does that mean in terms of an investment? Is this a good investment? Well, a break-even point of 9.75 years if you're investing $25,000, that's a 7.37% return on your investment. Now compare that with the stock market, the average stock market returns about 10%. So I'm not saying that this is the best way that you can invest your money, but it is a solid investment over time. Now let's look at a bad scenario. I chose St. Paul, Minnesota because it's far north, and it's in that band of the country that gets the least amount of sun, which is less than four sun hours per day. So according to PV Watts, you're going to need an 8.6 kilowatt system to produce enough energy for your home, which increases the overall solar panel system cost to 26.7K interest rates the same now there's no utility incentives up in minnesota that i could find so we're not going to get any incentives there again this is the worst case scenario um, let's say your your uh, insurance does go up slightly now it's not going to go up hundreds of dollars a month or anything like that it's going to go up very little because uh, as a percent of your home the solar panel system is not very big so anyways i threw in twenty five hundred dollars over the life of the solar panel system and let's say you only get half of the tax rebate. Let's say that you have a lot of home deductions and things like that, so you, you don't pay as much taxes, and so you're not getting as much benefit. I still put in 50% of the, the rebate, so you get $4,000 instead of the $8,000 that you normally would get. So your overall net total system cost is 35.6 k basically. That translates to a break-even point of 25 years. Now, this is the worst case scenario. This is not a good investment. You probably would not invest that if you have to finance and all the other assumptions are correct. However, if you can pay cash for it, it still is, it's not a great investment, but it still will pay for itself in 18 years, giving you about five to seven years of free energy. So even in the absolute worst case scenario, in the worst part of the country for solar with all the bad stuff, it still can make sense if you're investing cash in your solar panel system. It does still pay money. So let me throw in one other thing here. Let's say, I know some of you are going to comment, well what about damage to the system or I have to replace my roof or something like that. In most contracts with these solar panel companies, they give you a charge that they'll, they'll charge you to come and uninstall the solar panels so the roofers can come in and do their thing. Generally that's $500 or worst case scenario $1,000. That's the highest I've ever seen it. So in the grand scheme of things over 25 years that's negligible. I did not include it in my numbers. But if you want to argue with me on that, that's fine. But the absolute most it would change the numbers if you had something like that happen would be adding one more year onto the break-even analysis. Still 19 years, it will still pay. 
Now let's talk about replacing components. Maybe a couple panels need to be replaced or an inverter needs to be replaced during the life of the 25 year of the solar panel system. I can't forecast that. There's no average numbers for that. So I did not include that in the, in the calculations. However, I also did not include in the calculations the increase of your home's value. So there's pluses and minuses there that we really can't forecast, so I left them out of the calculations. But I will concede that in this situation, in certain parts of the country, if you do have to finance the system, you don't have the cash laying around, it's not a good investment. Don't do it. So in the final scenario, I wanted to do a good scenario, and it really didn't end up being any better than the average scenario. In fact, it was slightly worse. But I picked Phoenix, Arizona, because it's in the band of the country that gets the most sun. So it's over five and three quarters sun hours per day. So your, your solar panel system will be a lot cheaper. You only need 6.7 kilowatts to take care of your energy needs. If you have to finance that with all the numbers going on there, that's going to end, end up, and again, we're going to get the ITC rebate because this is the, the best case scenario. Unfortunately, you, Arizona doesn't have any utility incentives anymore, so I picked the wrong, the wrong city for the absolute best case scenario. But anyway, it is what it is. So if you have to finance it, you're going to break even in about 16.36 years, which is a solid investment. If you have the cash to throw down, it's a great investment. It's going to return its money in 10 and a half years, and that's going to equal you know, a 5 or 6% return on your investment, which is good. So in conclusion, what did we learn from this? We learned that if you've got the cash to plunk down, it is always a good investment to invest in solar for your home. But if you don't have the cash, it's going to really be a case-by-case -case basis. You're going to need to do the analysis yourself and figure out whether that's an investment you're willing to make in the long term. Again, I'm not saying it's the best investment out there. It's not better than the stock market or anything like that. However, it will pay you money in the long term no matter what if you have the cash. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already.